Well, it's now considered an essential service like water, electricity and gas. But having a decent broadband connection remains a distant dream for many. This week, a survey found that 50% of rural firms were unhappy with their internet service. And it's not just those in the countryside who feel left behind. Here's Laura Francis. It may be home to GCHQ, the front line of Britain's cyber security. But just a few streets away, Clark Lawson lives on this new housing estate in Cheltenham, where surfing the internet's a painful process. So this is a well-known um, website to do speed tests for your broadband service. And it shows that it is uh, less than 1.5 megabits per second. It's just frustrating, um, particularly knowing that you know, there are people nearby that do have a good broadband connection. It's just frustrating knowing that you know, there are people that do, do have it and it should be, should be available, um, but it's not. If working from home is tricky, watching programmes on his Skybox is challenging too. Probably take an hour or two to, uh, to download. When, when, it's a, you know, when it's a half an hour programme, it's probably not worth it. On the other side of town, businesses are also suffering. A computer company needs good connection speeds, but this one is struggling to even send emails with attachments. I've been complaining for probably 10 years now, and customers on the other side of the street have fast broadband, which is 10 metres away, two or three of our customers opposite us have fast broadband. Here we are on the main A40 to London, we have no broadband. Come in, Pete. Yeah, it's even. Is it still connected? But in other parts of Gloucestershire, the super-fast revolution is well underway. Over 160 miles of high-speed cables have already been laid, connecting over 40,000 homes. It's part of Fastershire, a government-funded scheme to bring faster broadband for all. The coalition has big dreams for the internet. This ad hit our TV screens just before Christmas. Together, we're investing in superfast broadband. Welcome to the superfast nation. The government has set itself a target of everyone having a basic broadband speed by next year. And it also believes it will reach 90% of people with superfast broadband in the same time. In Cheltenham, where 3,000 homes currently have super slow broadband, it's expected the town will miss both targets. The issue is this. Government-backed Fastershire scheme says it can't act as it would breach strict European Union rules on state aid. But broadband providers have told parts of the town they aren't commercially viable, leaving residents in the buffer zone while politicians and private providers argue it out. It's an issue the Liberal Democrat MP for Cheltenham has raised numerous times in Parliament. But is the Prime Minister aware that these targets could be missed even in urban areas like Cheltenham. I'm absolutely convinced that spreading broadband right around the country is one of the most important priorities for this government. But his Conservative rival says the Lib Dem MP isn't doing enough. The truth of the situation is Martin has been now Member of Parliament here for 10 years and in that time nothing has happened. So people have got to ask themselves the question, do you want a reactive MP or do you want a proactive MP, somebody who's going to find these issues and address them? It's not just an issue in Cheltenham. Southwest broadband speeds are the slowest in England. This is set to be a key election issue in both town and country. Well, we did ask to speak to BT, but they weren't available, otherwise engaged, I guess. The government minister responsible for the broadband rollout couldn't come on our show earlier. Uh, but earlier, he insisted his scheme was on track. But we are going well, and I think I would remind people again look at this you know we're all used to you know walking into our house turning on the electricity picking up the phone but this is still a big engineering project it takes time you need people on the ground you're digging up roads you're putting in new equipment we can't do it overnight but it is going very well well he thinks it's going well but a lot of your constituents don't well, I think uh, I should just say my Conservative opponent is completely wrong that nothing has happened. <laughs> Actually, 90% of the town has been provided with the opportunity to upgrade to superfast broadband, which is great. And I'm, Still I'm a considerable welcome problem. That. But mm. it's a big gap. That 10% who've been left out, some of them have got virgin cable and things like that, but there are some people who've just been left out between the commercial operation and the, uh, the subsidised Fastershire 
uh, operation that's being uh, supported by okay, government. Well you, don't, you, don't so you don't have a GB have to genius to work that out. So there's a gap. So the question is, how is the government going to fill that gap? And that's where you come in. Well, they need to get communications going between the commercial operators and the subsidised programme because they just don't seem to be talking the same language. Um, you know, Fastershire are talking in postcodes. BT are talking in cabinet areas. Virgin are talking in streets and premises. And it's ridiculous that we've uh, got to a situation that has you know, emerged in the last year or so that these gaps are there, which uh, we just need to, to sort out and fill, because it doesn't breach European state aid rules to provide superfast broadband subsidised where the commercial operators haven't done it. We just need to exchange the information. I mean, I've now started to actually gather the information street by street and house by house um, from constituents so that we can provide it. It is commercially sensitive. This is part of the difficulty. It but sounds, these are, it these sounds are a nightmare to, to sort through. out. It's all right for you, because you're in an area, you represent an area which has got superfast broadband almost everywhere. Apparently I'm the best outside London, and um, I, of course, take complete credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do with that, so, yeah. do with that your broadband? <laughs> Is it something we yeah. should take seriously? It's, it's, it's obviously, it's, it's incredibly important. I mean, it's, you know, you, you sort of saw in the clip that people now download programmes to watch, and I've only just discovered next Netflix, actually, but um, it's, um, it's yeah, I'm really much behind the times. <laughs> but, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's, it's really useful in terms of people's social activity, but in terms of businesses and people working from home as well and needing to download emails and send out documents from home. So in terms of that, you know, stifling creativity and economic growth, it's an important factor as well. It's a matter of regulation, isn't it? I mean, if, uh, if a, a company is saying, well, it's not really worth our while putting in the connection there, but government says it must happen, then it, there should be a mechanism to make it be, do so. Well, I think the, the point about the state aid rules is you have to, you have to draw a, a boundary between the areas where it really is commercially viable, where you wouldn't want government taxes and, and people's uh, you know, public money to be subsidising commercial operators like BT, and then the other areas where you clearly do need to subsidise it in order for it to happen. So the private the companies the just maps... need to be told what to do, don't they? And so, you, you know, you don't get the contract for the rest of the country unless you provide well, no, number five, they, they a case they're, they're Avenue completely with a separate, broadband connection. They're completely separate operations. Um, so this is part of the problem, but we need that communication to happen because it's not happening at the moment. You'd think communication companies would be quite good at this, yeah. but it oh, turns out they're not. Thank you.